Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Welcome to Hot Money on Bloomberg Quint Live. Before we start the show, let's address an important management. Uh, Gopal Mahadevan, the CFO of Ashok Leyland, joins us on the show. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for joining us uh, on the show. We've all seen the numbers that have come out. Let's get into specifics. First of all, given the fact that commodity and crude prices have risen significantly, uh, have you in the recent past or are you going to take any kind of price hike uh, to offset that? See, price hike is not a matter of policy. I think we would do it as a necessity when it's required. So that's how we have been able to, uh, you know, grow our uh, profitability even in this current quarter. So it, I think more than crude price, uh, what is important for us is the uh, impact on account of steel price increases. So when that happens and the raw material prices go up, uh, then we do uh, we do uh, increase prices. So what's the on-ground situation? You've been very close. I'll just yeah, go ahead, sir. Ultimately, this is not about uh, this price increases. We have to look at uh, how we are growing in the market and take a more informed decision. Okay, sir. Uh, so, what's the on-ground situation? You've had your year close to the ground. Uh, what's happening on the rural side of the market and what's happening on the urban side of the market? Well, I think, uh, you see, essentially for us, it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of demand that's happening because of the infrastructure spend, especially in the north and uh, eastern side of the countries. Eastern side of the country. In fact, uh, uh, you know the, the infrastructure thrust that the government has been giving, especially on roads and uh, also the revival of mining in the eastern side, has seen the, seen the growth of tippers going up and uh, also multi-axle vehicles. So as we move forward, if the GDP of the country were to continue to grow as it is, I think we should see an 8 to 10% growth in the overall industry volume. So one of the concerns that the market has is, you know, uh, uh, the market share growth is market share growth is not clearly coming in uh, for Ashok Leyland. Uh, uh, how, uh, how is the market share shaping up for you? Because that seems to be a concern, sir. Well, our market share has been slightly down in the uh, current quarter that predominantly on account of trucks. Uh, overall, our market share has been down by about 4.5%. Uh, I'm not too obviously concerned about this at the moment because we have to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, we are growing profitably. So there were deals, there was heavy discounting in the market, uh, which uh, resulted in, uh, you know, a severe erosion. If we had taken over some of those deals, they would have resulted in severe erosion of uh, profitability and also credit. So we decided to stay from some of these deals, but this is not to conclude that we, are, we don't have our aspirations for growth. So we will continue to pursue profitable growth and uh, we will continue to do what it takes to grow above the industry average. But there will be quarters where you will see that uh, there, is a dip, you know, there is a dip in the market share. But uh, if you look at our track record for the last six to seven years, we have actually grown from a 24-25% market share to 34%. So I'm not too concerned about it, but uh, very clearly the strategy of the company has paid off because we have been able to post very good results and uh, uh, with a with a uh, with a pretty good uh, EBITDA margin as well. Okay, uh, so where do you see demand coming from? Do you see it coming in from the uh, LCV segment? Do you see it coming from the heavy truck segment? Where is demand going to come for you now? I think the demand is coming both from heavy and LCV. I must say that the LCV business has grown by nearly 34 percent. And we have gained a percent, percentage market share from, uh, you know, from 15 to 16 percent. They are doing extremely well. The LCV division is also highly profitable. And as we move forward, uh, we would see growth in LCV. We expect to see growth in LCV as well as in the MXCV segment. But a lot of it is going to hinge on the uh, infrastructure spend that the government will have to do. So what about product mix? How, how can we see the product mix change for you uh, in the quarters going ahead? I think, uh, you see, uh, uh, we are going to see growth both in the heavy duty, uh, intermediate commercial and LCV. For example, in this quarter, the ICV intermediate commercial vehicle has posted a very good growth for us. And uh, the market, of course, overall is moving towards the heavier duty truck, especially the 37 tonner, 41, 42 tonner and uh, the 49 tonner. So you're seeing that growth happening. So I think... Uh, uh, you, you are going to see a, a move towards the uh, heavier tonnage trucks. But having said that, LCV business has been growing pretty smartly. And uh, for us, I mean, it has, it has grown pretty well. And we are very positive about the outlook for the LCV business also. 
Okay, and sir, before we end, uh, very important to ask you, the new norms for uh, Axel have come out, uh, uh, and they also now are part, of the, and, and the older trucks are also part of this uh, new rules that have come out. Uh, uh, firstly, what do you make of it, and is that a concern for you? Well, let us see this way. I am not too concerned at the moment because it's a very, very too early to even uh, comment on this. I would put it on three aspects. One is uh, applicability, the second one is impact, and the third one is readiness. I think that, uh, you know, if, if you look at it in terms of applicability, we are not very clear whether it is applicable, uh, uh, you know, prospectively or retrospectively. If it is uh, applicable prospectively, then I would say that, uh, you know, uh, the things are a lot simpler. If it is applicable retrospectively, one of the challenges that we will have is uh, with respect to the safety of those vehicles. Because, you see, while India is predominantly an overload market, we will have to figure out, uh, you know, we will have to figure out... Uh, uh, how the existing trucks can suddenly take overload, in, especially in segments where they have not been. The second one is impact. If you look at the impact, it is not as severe as we think it is because uh, if you look at, uh, you know, if you were to segment the market into tippers, uh, uh, ICV, and then if you take uh, uh, other applications uh, such as scooter carriers, car carriers, bulkers, cement bulkers, and, uh, uh, you know, oil tankers, most of the overloading norms, I mean, the new revised uh, uh, norms will not be applicable to the segment, which accounts for nearly 50 to 60 percent of the overall industry volume. So for the balance, we'll have to wait and watch. The third one is the readiness. I think uh, there'll be a lot of changes, some changes that will be required in the, the vehicle. So right from tires to steering to a chassis to some part of the power drivetrain. So if that happens, you know, we have to get new approvals from ARAI and then uh, launch the vehicles. Okay, we leave it at uh, we will leave it at that, uh, Mr. Madhavan. Thank you so much for speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, that was the management of Ashok Leyland. Uh, let's start with hot money. Let's welcome our experts, then Ritesh Asher of KIFS Trade Capital and Samir Kalra of Target Investing. Join me on the show. Thank you to both for joining me on the show. Today on Hot Money, we'll discuss stocks like Federal Bank, India Bulls Housing, Z Entertainment. We'll also discuss uh, one of the, we'll discuss and ask a guest uh, an attractive bit mid cap stock that they are betting on currently. But let's start with the first one, and that is Federal Bank. The counter moved up 20% post the numbers that came out is correcting in today's trade. Uh, what did our guest make of our results, and what should one do going ahead? We'll start with it, Samira. Uh, what did you make of the numbers? Did it deserve a 20% up move or basically it was so oversold that it they, that this this was just a short covering rally that we saw? So I think it was more of the short covering. Mm. Uh, there was a beat against the estimates. Mm. Uh, but if you see the base, the base was on the lower side. Mm. That's when the whole downfall of Federal Bank actually started in terms of numbers. The positive side, if you want to see the corporate uh, loan book grew 32%, which is really nice. Now, what led to that kind of loan book growth that I want to see and if it's sustainable till next quarter as well. So over there, I have a doubt coming in that where, what kind of accounts are they lending to and where this growth automatically, you know, all of a sudden has come in. Uh, the NPAs have stabilized because of the base again and the March ending taking all the burden in. So I think there is a kind of stabilization, but I won't go on the yesterday's up move. Mm. I am, there might be a certain downside also before the... So I think next quarter is the results where uh, I'll look and change a view. Okay. Uh, it's a wait and watch approach that Samir is talking about. Uh, Ritesh, what did you make of the numbers? Uh, see, if we are comparing the stock has uh, downfall from 127 to uh, almost 85. Sure. So, if you look at the downfall, the basic reason was the quarter three, uh, last year quarter four result. It was very uh, poor in terms of profit margin has been, uh, revenue has been fallen by almost 46%. In terms of uh, gross NPA has also uh, increased by 3%. In terms of provision and asset quality is also quite poor. The Yesterday, the result have been declared in such a way, it is only because of bounce back has come because of the slippages. Mm -hmm. If you look at the corporate slippages, it is almost 65% uh, uh, 
below uh, above the expectation same with the uh, agri uh, slippages it is almost 36 percent so which is something a positive uh, sign for the counter so asset quality have been improved there is a drastic restructuring has been happened compared to uh, March quarter to this quarter so but I personally feel the overall structure has formed strongly but it will be a wet and wash ki uh, kind of situation because whatever the structure changes have been done and the sl uh, slippages numbers are also improving so I personally okay. feel quarter to quarter three okay. it is going to be a good so okay, I I'll, come, I'll come to you uh, on, on that front I'm sorry we have a one minute yeah. uh, opening statement but I, I think both of our guests are talking about uh, a wait and watch approach uh, uh, so I, I'll come to where you left uh, left uh, do you think that this 20% move uh, prices in all the positives that came out and now uh, if someone is looking to take an investment in federal bank would you advise them to take it or uh, will you may will you wait for some triggers to play out for federal bank now? see definitely if you're looking at the restructure has happened in the yesterday uh, result what they have declared but the price at 85 rupees it is not something uh, fair value so i personally feel if it comes to around 70 75 it can be easily moved towards the 100 but the bull uh, run for this particular counter can be expected after quarter three and quarter three result okay so it's more of a wait and watch uh, do you agree any, any trigger that you're looking at for federal bank uh, after this 20% move? So I think the main triggers are, you know, the insurance part getting restructured after the IDBI deal mm -hmm. going through LIC and taking a decision over there. That can be one trigger in the short term. And the other trigger will be the results coming forth and any other restructuring or any other you know, recovery happening at the NPN. Because now for banks, we see recoveries as much more uh, upside risk than a NPA recognition on the downside risk. Okay. So that's the trigger. I think uh, it's more of a wait and watch approach that both of, both of our guests have uh, taken on a federal bank at this point of time. So uh, uh, hard to take a call on whether one should start investing uh, on federal bank at this point of time. Maybe on a correction is something that even Ritesh uh, spoke about on the company. The next one is India Bulls Housing Finance. It's, it's one of the top gainers today. It's up almost 5%. It's moved up significantly, but but over the past few weeks, uh, you know, it's been a marked underperformer. Uh, if you take out the move today, uh, the 5%, it, it would have given flat returns for the entire year with negative returns on a three month, nine month and six month basis. What exactly is causing the underperformance on India Bulls Housing Finance? We'll ask our guest. Uh, Ritesh, you have one minute for your opening statement, then I'll come back to you. But yeah. uh, w what's causing the problems at India Bulls Housing? See, India Bulls Housing Finance, if you leave the uh, mortgage industry is running at around 46%. Okay. Wherein the earning result, what they have declared, it is almost 36%. Okay. So earnings are not up to the mark the way the industries are performing, point number one. Point number two, the entire fund have been the borrowed uh, borrow fund. There is no cash deposit have been taken from the customer or something short of so borrow fund has been taken in such a way the cost of funding have been increased drastically mm. and because of that reason there is a pressure in the counter and they are not able to make the uh, margins and they are not able to give the good earnings okay so that's the opening statement on india bulls housing finance uh, what do you think is causing underperformance so i think two sides there is uh, one the rate hike cycle has started hmm. so now any new loan which you're giving will be less profitable than your base hmm. so i think that will be a worry for throughout the nbfc housing systems uh, second intervals housing was easily able to cover a lot of uh, bonds issues and get ncds into money and <laughs> get that easy growth at a lower interest now when the bond yields have already spiked irrespective of how many rbi rate hikes come in the issuance of that ncds has already gone up as the cost so i think the incremental funding is hurting them uh, in that zone and th i think there is a kind of a slowdown in the new purchases which was happening six months back Okay. Uh, so I think there is a downside on the demand and the upside on the cost. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in. Uh, not the most optimistic views coming in on India Bulls Housing Finance. But we'll ask, uh, so, so this basically interest rate, it'll affect the entire industry. It's not only India Bulls Housing Finance. So are you negative on the entire housing finance space or? Uh, so uh, see, if you see housing finance, we were negative uh, six, nine months earlier only because we expected this rate hike to come out sooner because it has to be owned earlier than the bond hike actually took place and for us i think two more rate hikes should come in this year because we are already late in rate hikes according to the bond yield 
So over there, I think the housing finance, especially the NBFCs which are playing this, will find a very difficult spot because their NIMS will contract drastically and the demand on the other side is contracting. That's yep. why even they are trying to meet the government and find a solution to the address this kind of a asset issue. Anything that you like in the housing finance space? So we remain leader with the SGFC and Group Finance. Over there. Despite valuations, you are at uh, yeah. Group Finance not to buy right now, but as a company, as a uh, corporate structure, I think Group Finance tips over others. Okay, uh, Ritesh, uh, what's your view on the entire bank, uh, NBFC space, housing finance space? Uh, are you negative? Are you positive? And what's the best pick if someone has to? See, as we have rightly discussed, the right now the housing finance is struggling due to the uh, RERA uh, okay. circulation, and because of the RERA norms, the cost of uh, compliance have been increased for the new project. Secondly, the adequate cash in hand is also required to implement the project also. So there is an uh, re reverse implication in terms of implementing the project, and the, because of that reason, the cost of funding have been increased drastically. Okay. If we we'll compare uh, in terms of uh, India Bose housing finance the AUM has almost grown by 34 percent in okay. spite of all the challenges company is able to perform better in terms of AUM collection the disbursement percentage has also increased by 30 percent on quarter on quarter and year on year is 50 percent so overall I feel in spite of compliances and the RERA norms which is implemented to entire NBFC in the housing finance so I personally feel the sector it looks to be very positive India Bulls housing finance itself it looks to be very positive the based on the quarter result have been uh, declared so that's your topic in the housing finance definitely space. yes okay so that's the view that's coming in on the housing finance space uh, india bulls housing finance continues to be the topic that uh, ritesh is speaking about while uh, samir would rather prefer to stay with the leader in the pack and that is hdfc uh, he also likes grow finance at this point of time let's move on to the next talk and that it was uh, the big number that came in after market hours yesterday and that was the entertainment came in line with what was anticipated the, the counter trading up by almost one one and a half percent in trade but what's uh, uh, what's the way ahead for z entertainment and how how are you looking at analyzing the numbers uh, samir uh, how do you analyze these numbers were you happy so the results were good enough for the estimates which were out there and i think on a standalone basis they did pretty well uh, over there what has happened is their financial cost has come down drastically from a 15 crore previous year, uh, previous year same quarter to 5 crores this year and quarter on quarter 120 crores to 5 crores. So that has helped them out. The subscription growth has come around 12% domestically and the ad revenue is 22%. Where I'm worried is the cash flow utilization. Now they have two impacts. Their production costs have increased for the cereals which they produce on their own. And the Z5 content, they are trying to put up good amount of money. So I think cash flow wise, the deterioration will come in. And that's why I'm a little worried on the stock. Okay, a little worried, but results were in line with what was anticipated. Uh, Ritesh, what did you make of these numbers? Were you happy? Yes, definitely. If you look at the profit, it is almost grown by 31%. The revenue is also grown by 15%. So profit is increasing, revenue is increasing. The revenue increase uh, increment is clearly indication in terms of 28% subscription has also increasing. If you look at the overall performance, the 28% subscription have been increasing. If you look at the viewership, the regional viewership has also increasing drastically. Okay. So regional viewership has increasing. In terms of cost reduction, as we rightly summit has said, the cost have been controlling such way to increase the profit margin and they are moving towards the digitalization platform and because of the digitalization the subscription numbers and the viewership has increased by almost 28 percent so i personally feel uh, in terms of ebitda margin also we are talking about it is almost perf uh, perform at 26.7 percent ebitda so i personally feel uh, in coming seven to eight months there is a big uh, event uh, rally is also coming in so based on that the viewership is going to take a biggest advantage of it and simultaneously okay. in terms of uh, viewership uh, Z Entertainment is going to take in a biggest advantage. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in. Uh, one uh, one slightly cautious view and one positive view that's coming in on uh, Z Entertainment. Uh, Dwell more. What are you talking about? These uh, events that you're talking about. What, what what are the key triggers that you believe uh, could be a re-rating factor for Z? And 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 uh, I'm assuming that you would be rather bullish on Z. Uh, considering all these factors. See, if you uh, look at it, the overall, uh, for any media channel, the overall uh, revenue is coming towards the advertisement expenses. 
uh, advertising uh, income. In terms of advertising income, there is a big rally like election is due. So there are a lot of advertising uh, is coming in and there are a lot of viewership is also coming in in terms of, you know, uh, election. It, sure. it is a big trigger for our uh, Indian economy. So I personally feel the biggest viewership is Z and in terms of advertising is also increasing. So that will impact to the revenue and because of the revenue is, uh, because of the revenue is increasing, the profit margin is also increasing. The EBITDA margin is right now is 26.7%. So I'm expecting uh, quarter 18, uh, 2018 and 19, that will move to almost 29.5%. Okay, despite premium uh, valuations compared to the rest of pack, you still would prefer Z in the media pack among yes, the others? Yes, definitely because we need to look at the projection of the uh, company in terms of quarter 2 and quarter 3, how they are performing. The result I have declared yesterday just clearly denote and indicate that the company is moving towards the uh, maintaining the cost and moving towards the digital arena which increasing their profit margins. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in. Uh, Samir, uh, uh, in the media space, uh, will Z be the best pick or uh, are you cautious on the media space? As so well? we prefer Sun TV. Okay. Uh, two reasons. One is the cash flow generation is much better because the production costs are not there. They only take the uh, advertising space or share from the producers and they give them the slots. So I think that is much more cash flow generating for you. Uh, secondly, you have the exposure to SunDirect through there. So uh, everything which is happening, uh, you get the exposure through Sun TV directly. Mm -hmm. So you don't have different like Z, Dish. Mm -hmm. It's all in one kind of a market cap which you have to accumulate. The only risk over there is the political risk which comes in and goes out which we don't give that kind of a heat to because these are more <coughs> temporary issues. The over there, the market shares and local regional places have increased versus the Asia TV. So I think this kind of a momentum for Sun TV and we go for cash flow generation on mm -hmm. a longer term basis. So I see Sun TV getting a better uh, cash flow generation in future as compared to Z. But, but Sun, yeah. Sun trades at the massive discount, that's yeah. one of the positive. But the factor is that uh, competition is coming in from Sony, it's coming in from Star, it's coming in from Z into their prime market uh, which is Sun TV, the main channel yeah. in Tamil Nadu. They are losing market share, that's what the VAC data shows. See, the only point what is happening is incremental plays take out the make the pie smaller for you hmm. that i understand but if you see the cash flow generation and the market share which you get that has been there for quite number of years there might be a like when the political party got out of the government the market shares went down hmm. it's a very relative basis what happens over there now the market shares have gone down but I don't see that sustaining at a down level. These are more incremental issues which come in and they have been facing that with the local competition as well. So I think they will have a better market share in future as well. Because of the cash flow you are able to put okay. in your main core business. You are not putting it somewhere which is like highly competitive like online content market and which is more cash burning than the cash flow. Okay, so that's coming That's the view that's coming in on the media and entertainment space. Uh, uh, Ritesh likes Z, that would be his topic in the media space. Uh, cautious view on Z by Samir and he would prefer a Sun TV because of all the reasons that he discussed right now. The final stock we want to discuss is that the markets are bleeding. Some of the mid caps have come in at, uh, they're down 30, 40, 50 percent. Valuations are attractive. We're asking our guests to, uh, you know, uh, recommend one mid cap investment idea that, uh, you know, our viewers can uh, look it and pretty much buy at uh, you know for a medium term perspective uh, so we'll ask them that uh, Samir uh, which is the stock that you're talking so about for me it's JTEKT which was earlier known as Sona Koyo. okay uh, the earlier issues were promoter based uh, there were a lot of uh, margin contractions over there uh, now the new promoters which are the uh, parent ja mm. Japanese promoters have taken over the whole restructuring of the management has taken place so the MD the board has been revamped the operations are rationalization and in that what is happening the debt which they had has been reducing at a faster space so I think next six to nine months this should be a very less debt or almost debt free firm. Over there, the second is the subscribe. Uh, there's a subsidiary involved over there uh, with the same parent. So they are merging both of them. And that has a better operational matrix. Mm -hmm. So on the merged entity, the matrix will drastically change and improve the EBITDA margins which are there. Mm -hmm. Because JTKT on a standalone basis was the provider of the component which was being supplied to the subsidiary. Mm -hmm. And subsidiary has a higher margin. 
So I think on the merger basis, this company will do really well. So when do you see these triggers playing out? Uh, when so will this merger six happen? Months, in six months, they are in process. So I think next six months, this will play out. Okay, I believe over the past few days, some notable uh, uh, investors also bought into JTKT as far as the bulk deal is concerned. But Ritesh, which is the stock that you want to talk about? I will bet on Colgate. Okay. The reason of RO, uh, ROC, it is almost uh, giving almost 63% return. Okay. If you look at it, the uh, dividend payout ratio, it is also coming at around 50%. If you look at the revenue growth, it is almost 5%. If you look at uh, EBITDA margin, that is also perform at 26%. And first of all, the Colgate, is it is a worldwide presence. So if you look at no, uh, North America and the Latin America contributes both put together contribute almost 45% of the total portfolio of the uh, Colgate and uh, counter and the companies is also focusing into the consolidation phase and they are moving uh, out from the consolidation phase and the company is coming up with a lot of stores all over the India wherein the direct impact in terms of revenue will be credited to the company. So company is expecting 20-25% of the revenue growth from the direct stores they are keeping towards uh, uh, mm -hmm. in India. So I'm expecting the profit margin what companies reported 26% and profit after tax is also almost 16% which is quite fabulous and they are expecting for uh, FI 18-19 reaches to almost 20-21%. So overall fundamental view of the Colgate is quite look uh, promising. So I feel current market price is the best bet on the Colgate. Uh, what kind of uh upside do you see have you recommended this stock to your clients yes definitely we have recommended this sto uh, stock to our client because it is coming out from the comfort zone and they are moving towards the good uh, fundamental story so i personally feel from here on minimum 20 percent return can be expected in 12 months of time okay 20 percent returns and uh, two more questions uh, i'll sure. club it into one uh, valuations are you finding it expensive the entire fmcg uh, that's the first question. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, concerns, in terms of competition? See, if you look at overall FMCG and the consumption sector, I don't find it's an expensive because per capita income, it was $1,700 uh, $1, in last year and this year it has been improved to $2,100. Uh, uh, mm. So per capita income has been increased. Second reason is earlier the household uh, income earning members, it was hardly one or two. Now Nowadays the maximum earning members in the family the spending and the expenditure is going to be increasing and that benefit comes to the branded and uh, branded products food and beverages and simultaneously uh, such a lifestyle wherein you can shift your lifestyle from two wheelers to the four, uh, four wheelers and henceforth so I'm uh, personally believing after uh, pharma and the mid cap IT and the IT sector is performed consumption is going to be uh, outperforming for quarter two and quarter three okay so that's the view that's coming in uh, JTK80 is something that uh, Sami recommended and Colgate Palm of India is something that uh, Ritesh is recommending at this point of time. But with that, uh, we're completely timed out on Hot Money today. Ritesh, thanks so much for joining me today. Samir, thank you thank so much you. for coming in today. Uh, with that, it's a wrap on Hot Money. Ask PQ comes up next. Stay tuned to Bloomberg Quint.